Today, we start a new chapter in this Spirit Hunter universe. Actually, it's an old chapter. Hmm. So, what I'm doing here is I'm, uh, I'm going to be playing this game concurrently with a new one uh, called Conception. And it turned out to be even more dubious than I expected. <laughs> So I'm, I'm playing this one at the same time so that there'll be something else for people to watch who don't want to watch that. Hey, want to hit up the karaoke place? The new Love and Hero song is out. Hmm. I'm not feeling up to it today. This story creeped me out earlier. Do you want to hear it? Oh, sure. You remember Ms. Yamaguchi? She wears those big glasses. I heard she's gone missing. What? No one knows where she is? Nope. She just disappeared. Just up and poofed from the library. One of the student librarians said she was researching something there. But then she vanished. But she's super diligent, right? One of the students thought it was weird that she'd up and leave like that. So he checked in on her. But when he did... Hmm. Yep. Playing the right game here. <laughs> the only thing left was her arm. It had a, her really weird scar on it, so it was definitely her arm. A scar? Yeah, it looked like a dog bite. She showed it to me once. She had no idea where it came from. I don't know what these are called, but I love them. For real? There was a scar like that on Mickey's leg, too. Huh? Mickey? Wait, that's... The girl who went missing, yeah. That's crazy! Maybe that rumor is true. The one about the cursed scar? <laughs> Good guess. Cut it out, you're scaring me. I'm also going to be editing this series a bit more, so if there's long uh, sequences of just searching uh, for clues or something, I will skip through it. I hear snatches of a idiotic ghost story. They're speaking seriously, but it's obvious that they don't believe a word. They're only killing time. Rumors are the best way to do that. The sun's about to set. It's gotten later than I planned. I shouldn't have stuck around to hear that story. I'd better hurry. Also not going to be doing as many voices this time because it killed my throat. I had to take like two days off between each recording. <laughs> oh, and I'm doing a version of this with commentary and without because some people, I expect, don't want to hear my dumb, ugly voice. But they still want to see the game. Thunder rumbles in the distance. A huge mansion is in front of me. It's right here, in fact. This game, these games have got such good art. Strange. I'm sure I was just... My vision blurs. My ears are buzzing. Ah, my head's swimming. It's almost like I'm drunk. Speaking of which... What time is it? I glance at my wrist, but my watch is gone. Did I put it in my coat pocket? I check my coat pocket, but my coat is gone. All I find is a business card. In elegant printed letters is a name. Saya Kujo Spirit Healer. Saya Kujo Spirit Healer. On the back is a photo of the mansion. I guess this must be the Kujo Mansion then? Kujo Mansion. Saya Kujo. Those names sound familiar somehow. One way to find out. Taking a deep breath, I reach out to knock. You would not believe how long my arm is. I stop when I see something on my wrist. Dog bite? Yeah. All right. Oh, it's the titular death mark, I bet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's a strange scar. When did that? I could just be imagining this, but... I feel an icy chill when I look at it. My fist pounds the door. 
No reply. A light appears in a second floor window. It's probably too far from the door for them to hear me knocking. I grasp the doorknob and find it unlocked. No point in staying outside. I'll just go in. I'll apologize to the owner later. This guy hasn't been to Texas. The inside is shrouded in darkness. A small beam of light from the window is the only way I can see anything in here. It's dead silent, except for the constant ticking of a clock's second hand. I must be in the entrance hall. The atrium extends to the second floor. Anyone home? There's no one reply to my shout. Maybe they've soundproofed this place so well they can't hear me down here. I guess I need to go upstairs then. A staircase is just visible up ahead. I walk towards it, cutting across the hall. My ears catch a strange noise. I turn to look where it's coming from. Dog? Oh no, not another doll. Someone's there, enveloped by the dark. I think they're staring at me. Well... I'll talk to them. No, I'll approach them. Gulping. I, hesit I hesitantly make my way over, trepidation slowing my steps. Wait a minute, her eyes were open a second ago. She's faking it. It's a young girl. She doesn't move an inch as I approach. At least it seems that way to me. Wait a minute. I know that get up. Whoa. That's cool. It doesn't look like she's even breathing. A corpse. Great. I creeped myself out. I start to sweat. What should I do? Uh, I'm absolutely. With a shaky hand, I slowly reach out and touch her skin. I'm not sure what I expected, but it feels unnatural somehow. It's a doll man. Stiff and cold. Just the way I like him. I press down on her arms and she makes the strange sound I heard earlier. Ah, uh, now it makes sense. She's a doll. Put her there, doll. A doll's joints creak when they're moved. That's what made the noise. What a relief, if disappointing. You're not putting two and two together here, fam. How did it move if it's a doll? I carefully begin climbing the stairs, making sure not to trip. As I reach the landing, the sharp sound of a bell breaks the silence. It seems to be coming from above me. Looking up, I can spy the outline of a clock. I bet that's what make what's making the sound. You guys are regular Sherlock Holmes so far. Absolutely. The noise guides me over. It's an antique grandfather clock. The noise is definitely coming from here. I reach toward the glass to check inside. Hmm. All of a sudden, it stops chiming. Silence descends, broken only by ticking. I guess it's fixed now, but... That timing was a little too spot on. Was it really a coincidence? All of these strange occurrences make me uneasy, but I continue on to the room with a light. Stopping in front of the door, I knock. But again, there is no reply. I try again several times, even calling out. But there's still no answer. I push on the door. It's dark inside. Strange. I definitely saw lights on in here when I was outside. 
wafting through the room is an odd smell. It's sugary, like a ripe fruit. The whole room is permeated with it. Some kind of aromatherapy, maybe? It's not a particularly pleasant smell, though. It's a corpse, fam. The aroma, to her eye, the aroma draws me further into the room. Actually, it's blood, probably, right? No, it's a corpse. The floor under my feet feels off. It's wet. It dawns on me that I'm smelling something else mixed in with the sweet smell. I know this scent. This metallic tang. Lightning flashes and I catch a glimpse of something. The startling grotesque object stretches out across the floor beneath my feet. Something strange is there. Oh, It's so bizarre that I can't stop staring. Yeah, definitely the same artist. This guy or girl is good. Definitely have to look up what other stuff they've done. Blooming flowers are everywhere. They're bursting out of the woman's stomach. Her blood-soaked body overwhelmed with them. I wrench my gaze away, horrified. But the hellish image is burned into my mind. I can feel my entire body shaking. Bile rises. I'm going to throw up. Whoa. Whoa. That's better. In the next instant, the lights are on. Wait, that's not all. The body is gone, leaving only a stain. This doesn't make sense. It's a bad dream. At least, I'd really much prefer that it was. But the faint smell that remains and the blood stain crush any hope that I had of that. I beat a retreat from the room in an effort to escape this whole bizarre situation. When I stumble back into the hall, the lights are on in here as well. I decide to have another look around. All the furnishings in here are old enough to be antiques. They match this old-fashioned mansion. A large doll sits on a couch. This must be the figure I saw in the dark. One would easily mistake it for a human if they couldn't see the ball joints. Probably belongs to the owner of this mansion. What do I do now? Contact the police? Her stomach was full of flowers, sir, and her corpse fa up and vanished like fog. Like anyone would believe that. Yokoso. I really like this. The doll moved. It spoke. A different kind of shudder runs through me than the one when I found the corpse. Until this point, I was nothing more than an observer to all these freaky events. I could distance myself from it, but now a doll is talking to me. Have I startled you? If so, I sincerely apologize. My master ordered me to behave as a normal doll until told otherwise. The words are elegant and refined, but her face never moves an inch. She may look human, but she clearly isn't. She slowly folds her hands together, so she can move too. I'm sorry for not introducing myself. I'm called Mary. I've... Uh, yeah, I've seen your episode of Ghost Stories. You have likely seen a number of oddities here already. I see. My master, Sayakujo, was unable to escape from the mark then. Sayakujo. Does she mean that corpse? But wait, what's this about a mark? Lady Saya was searching for a way to escape the mark. Were you not also called here by her because of the mark on your arm? She must be talking about this weird scar. 
Did Sayakujo invite me to this mansion? When I try to remember, my head hurts. I have something to tell you in place of my late master, but I would like to ask you one thing first. Do you know your own name? Well, that was a much simpler question than I had been expecting. It's... I break out into a sweat. My throat is drying up. Why? Why can't I answer? I'm shocked to find I'm coming up blank. I see. Then it is as I thought. Somehow Mary knows what's going on with me. Before I offer an explanation, please decide on a temporary name. Things will go much easier if I have a name by which to call you. It's also likely you will find it hard to remain calm if you are nameless. She's probably right. Better to have some placeholder name than continue life as a hollow, nameless being. Last name. Alright, this is going to take me a while. My name? It's none other than... Wait a minute, is this first name or last name? It's last name. It's none other than... Tenma. Tenma. Yo. On Tenma. And let's see. I think I like him with glasses. Yeah, went with a uh, whatever that is last time. Go with glasses today. I'm Johan Tenma. Damn it! Understood, Lord Tenma. Now, I shall explain to you about the mark. It is the seal of death. Those who have it will soon die. You do not believe me? I am certain this sounds absurd to one who has led an uneventful life. However, my master's death proves to be, an, to be irrefutably true. The corpse's sweet stench comes back to me. It didn't seem like the work of humans. I'm afraid the horror of the death mark does not stop there. Victims slowly lose their memories until the day they die. They face death all the while suffering from the terror of losing oneself. Memory loss? That can't be. That'd mean I'm... Yes. The fact that you have forgotten your name proves that death is coming. Lord Tenma, you... will die this very dawn. Hmm... I don't think so. Probably. <laughs> My memories skip forward a bit after that. I just remember being completely stunned at what Mary revealed to me. I can probably attribute it to memory loss caused by the mark. The next thing I know... I'm lying in a guest room in the mansion. I vaguely recall dragging myself up the stairs and coming here. I must have fallen asleep at some point, and thanks to that I feel a lot better. I'll die at dawn, huh? I try saying it out loud. It's definitely shocking, but I can't say it feels real yet. It doesn't make sense. Way out of the blue. But if it's true, is waiting for my untimely death the only thing I can do? Nah, not me. I walk right up to clocks. I walk right up to dolls. It might be a good idea to ask Mary more about it. I find Mary sitting in the exact same spot as before. She hasn't moved an inch. I doubt a doll gets bored waiting like humans do. 
Good morning, Lord Tenma. Wait a minute. Is that even the same actress? <laughs> Are you feeling better now? Uh, no, I, I feel kind of kind of terrible, actually. That is only natural, of course. Since it appears that you have calmed down, I would like to ask you a question. What will you do now? I can guide you down only two paths. The first is to wait for death. The second is to fight the mark. Can you help me? If that is what you wish, yes. My master was researching the mark. A few days prior to her death, she found a way to escape it. Regretfully, she passed away before she was able to inform me. So, she doesn't know anything after all. There is some time yet before dawn. You have a slim chance. Salvation is a, a thin thread dangling from heaven. Would that you grab hold of it. I shall do my utmost to help. What will you do? I guess it boils down to whether I trust her. If she's right about all this, my time on earth is up at dawn. I don't want to die. Then there's no other choice but to resist the mark until then. If she's lying, I'll be fine when morning comes. But am I really all right with that? People are being killed in nonsensical, grotesque ways. Am I really going to turn a blind eye to it? This is a life or death decision. I need to think about it carefully. That wasn't a cut just there. The music restarted. <laughs> you will be faced with choices that can result in death. There is a limited time and your soul power will continue to drain. Time's up or... Uh, time... Time's up or wrong answers will result in game or war. So be quick, but also be careful in finding the right answer. Restoring soul power. Completing a deadly choice will restore some soul power. Dialogue will be sped up when pressing LB, but certain dialogue cannot be sped up. The start button will display previous dialogue. RB will activate auto mode. You can hide the dialogue window by pressing Y. Then I shall ask you, will you quietly wait for death, or will you struggle against the mark? This is a tricky one, guys. I think I'll wait for death. Meekly accept your death by the mark? Nah, I'm good. Is that so? Then please rest here in the mansion until dawn. Good night. Wait a minute, she never said goodnight to us before, I don't think. Oh, there's not a unique death for that. Oh, cool. I don't have to replay it all the way from the beginning again. I was kind of scared about that. I was hoping for a unique uh, picture, like the loser death in the first one. Soy boy death. Then I shall ask you, will you quietly wait for death or struggle against the mark? I'll... I'll fight the mark until it kills me. Wait, no. Yeah, sure, something like that. I've decided to trust you. As you say, Lord Tenma, then I shall carry out the dying wish of my master and aid you. I cannot do much, 
but feel free to request anything you wish of me. Uh, you don't know anything about me, girl. Doll girl. I made up my mind, but that doesn't mean I know what I should do. I know squat about the supernatural, and losing my memory makes research impossible. But I don't have a moment to lose. A knock comes from the front door. Who'd come the, here this late at night? Oh my, what a sign of fate. It seems that other mark bearers have arrived. Is it instinct that she knows these things? Maybe she has some kind of mysterious power, being a talking doll and all. I beg your pardon, Lord Denma. I do apologize, but could you greet our, our guests in my stead? They may experience a shock if a doll such as myself welcomes them. Moreover, while I am able to move my arms, I am unable to walk. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. I move to the front door and greet our guests. People fated to die, like me. I wonder what they're like. Who I find at the door are not who I expected to see out this late at night. Ew. Ugh. I don't like this art. This art's kind of... This art's a step down from the next game. A high schooler. And a small boy. These kids have the mark? No way. Uh... Uh, that is to say, uh, we came to see Professor Cujo. Who are you? I can't say I'm a total stranger since I am here in the mansion. I'm... Uh, I'm a relative. Oh, so you're her older brother. Your eyes do look kind of similar. She seems to know Saya Cujo. Now that I think about it, that business card did say spirit healer. Going off this girl's accessories, I get the feeling she's a huge occult fan. I'm Moe Watanabe. I'm here to talk to her about this article she wrote in Ooh Parts Monthly. She pulls an occult magazine out of her bag. Inside is a picture of the mark. The accompanying article says the scar is... A soul-inhabiting disease that erases memories. Inquire at Cujo Mansion. Um, this is the same scar, right? Moe lifts up her skirt a bit to show me her leg. No, no. Right there on her thigh is the mark. I think I know what the article means by erasing memories. I've been super forgetful lately. I even, I'm even, i even blanking on my friend's names. That's never happened to me before. Do you think this scar's doing it? That article is obviously bogus. The young boy scoffs. Even kids know better than to believe the go in ghosts or curses these days. And a high schooler fell for it. You must feel embarrassed about that. But Tsukasa... Weren't you hanging around in front of the mansion's gate? Fess up. Your scar scares you. Tsukasa seems to have no retort to that. He silently sulks. Looks like a bullseye. It's clear they're both mark bearers. I better bring them over to meet Mary. Moe shrieks excitedly when she gets close. Oh my god, it's so cute! It's a doll, yeah? I've never seen one this big before. The craftsmanship is so detailed, it's almost like it's alive. They're both admiring her when... Welcome to Cujo Mansion. What? It spoke? With that, the two new visitors join our number. They enter this monstrous world. It hovers on the precipice of death. Mary tells Moe and Tsukasa about the mark once they regain their composure. All about the steady memory loss and their imminent death. It, seem, it sounds like a ridiculous story, but 
It gains validity coming from someone like her. Both of their faces pale. Now, if you came specifically here because you believed in not Lady Saya's article, you must have already experienced the pain of losing your memories. Moe admitted as much earlier, but I can see Tsukasa's face darken, so it must be happening to him too. Hey, Moe, I'd like to confirm something. Where were you when you got the mark? My amnesia seems to be worse than theirs, so they might remember. I'm not positive, but I think my mark might be a curse from Hana Hiko. Anahiko? This name is familiar to me. He is the ghost the resident children of this town whisper about, correct? My master was interested in him. So Sayakujo was curious too. Could be connected to the mark somehow. I'd like to hear more about this ghost. As you wish, Lord Tenma. Then I shall tell you. The rumors of Hanehiko. I'm really liking this game so far. I'm wondering, my theory so far, we've actually uh, been here before. We've definitely been here before. And our, like our memory loss, we're like s several cycles through it already. Oh, did you hear about that ghost boy all those schools in H-City are talking about? Sounds like Hanehiko is back. I heard that he can appear if you peek in a school mirror at night. He'll ask you something. Am I pretty? If you tell him no, you'll be fine, but if you say yes... Give me that red stuff then. And then he just disappears. But that's not all. Anahiko hates adults, you know. I heard that if the person he asks is an adult, they'll die. And not just drop dead. Their blood is drained from them. And next to the corpse is a single rose. A rose dripping with blood. Rumors can be easily manipulated, passing from one person to another, assumptions and errors mix in, but they also hold a hint of truth. Ms. Moe, do you know anything else? I think I probably got my mark when I was investigating Honey Hiko at H Elementary School. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Etchy Elementary School? Oh my God. This has got to be some sort of clue. I should ask her more about it. I don't want to know why she was at Echi, Echi Elementary. Uh, when did you notice the mark? I noticed it later in the bath. A strange scar was suddenly on my thigh. It really surprised me. Wow, everyone's getting marks on their while they're in the bath, huh? I realized immediately that it had to be a what Professor Kujo wrote about. What should I ask next? Was Hanahiko there? I don't think so, but I can't really say for sure. I went to the mirror, but a shiver ra suddenly ran down my spine. I got spooked and left. Why were you at H Elementary? My big dream is to write about the occult, so I'd love to see a ghost. I found this article in a magazine mentioning Hanehiko was seen there. I figured that place would be easier to sneak in than a regular school, since it's been closed down. I think I have a handle on what happened. No way to note for sure about the ghost, but there's no denying she had the mark after returning home from H. Edgy Elementary. Then, maybe... Tsukasa glances down at his left hand. Mine might be from Hanahiko too. I noticed it after I got home from T Elementary. That ghost was seen at a lot of schools in... I'm going to call it H-City. 
But in Japanese, that's Echi City, which means like... Well, look it up. Maybe he's remembered something. I better ask him some questions, too. T Elementary? I go to school there. You've probably heard of it since it's the top-ranked elementary school in each city. Did you see Hanahiko? No, and I didn't get chills or anything either, but I think I passed a mirror. I went to the bathroom before going home. When was that? Maybe around sunset? I was heading home until I realized I forgot something and turned back. I don't think he knows anymore. Their stories are pretty similar to the Hanahiko rumors. It can't just be a coincidence. I mean, how many people walk in front of mirrors every day? You must investigate the places where Hanahiko appeared, for their sake as well as yours. Um, that's all well and good, but what exactly am I investigating? Death and life coexisting. If the mark originated there, then a way to erase it will also be there. You must find it. Find the key you need to break the mark's curse. That is the only way to escape. And all of a sudden, a huge burden was dropped on my shoulders. It seems that Hanahiko appeared at two schools. Where will you investigate? Uh, I'm not going to Echi Elementary, that's for damn sure. I'm not going back to jail. Wait, wait, are you serious? A lot of weirdos are around like, yeah, yeah, they would be. So security is real tight at night. You're clearly suspicious looking. You'd be arrested in a hot second. That's not nice to say, but she's right. It'll be safer to sneak into edgy elementary. Jesus Christ. Want to get going then? Let's do this. Wait, you're coming too? Uh, of course. I haven't given up on seeing Hanahiko yet. She grins at me. Is she really strong, or is this blind optimism or stupidity? I'm going to. Hey, not you too. Seriously. My life's on the line here. I don't want to be the reason. I don't want the reason I died to be because you messed something up. That's pretty bold. Good thing you're cute. But to bring kids along with me is. I understand your hesitation. But the mark does not discriminate, stealing the lives of children and adults. If they wish to fight their fate, you must honor that. I suppose human logic doesn't fly when dealing with the supernatural. We'll need to prepare ourselves for the worst if we're going to survive. Please take only one mark bearer with you, however. A large group will increase the odds of you being detected by spirits. I also ask that you not waste time dawdling with others along the way. It is possible unnecessary contact may hasten the effects of the mark. Only engage when absolutely necessary. Keep contact with others to a minimum. Uh, fine with me. First, select a mark bearer. Do this in the partner menu. Oh yeah, hey mister. Don't you think it'd be a good idea to take notes on what Mary's told us? Your memory's getting worse all the time. We don't want to forget anything. Hey, she's pretty smart. I don't know when I'll lose my memory again. I'll write down all the information I get and keep it in my file. Something in it might just save our lives at some point. Okay. Cool, cool. Important info on spirits will be added to the spirit file. Check it from your bag. Consult it if you need help. Save at the mansion or out or haunts. Return to the title screen from the bag to load and choose continue. Ah, cool! Oh, look at this. Oh, this is pretty cool. Please head to H Elementary and investigate Hanako. Choose whether to bring Lady Moe or Lord Tsukasa with you. A large, a large group will increase the odds of you being detected by spirits. And do not waste time dawdling. 
and it's possible. Unnecessary contact with Mahazen and effects of Mark. Only engage when absolutely necessary. Keep out of to a minimum. Hmm. This is interesting difference. I, I don't know which one I'll like better. I'm going to save here, though. If I can. Oh, that's interesting. One save slot. I think. Right? What happens if I press save? Oh, okay, okay. So it doesn't actually exit the game. That's that's good. But still, only one save slot. That's going to be tricky. Yeah, he does look suspicious, all right. Tools. A pure silver letter opener taken from the mansion's hall. A beautiful woman's face is engraved on the handle. The blade isn't sharp, but it can candle soft items. Stab with knife. Range sharp. What the heck? This is totally different. I've got stats? Power, intelligence, spirit power, and dexterity. First, we have to get to Etchy Elementary. Mary says we're free to use the car in the garage. The garage is detached from the mansion. The vintage model van and bicycles only accent the elegant interior. Thank God for careless people. The car key was left on the table. Time to go. Uh, hey. According to Mary, you lost a bunch of your memories, right? Is it really okay for you to drive? She looks at me suspiciously. Don't worry. It'll be fine, uh, I think. It'll all come back when I take the wheel. Part of that is to convince myself. But aren't you missing your license? If a cop finds us, we'll have more to worry about than Hanahiko. She's right about that. But our lives are on the line, so we don't have much of a choice. Once the mark's gone, I'll remember. Then I'll just have to get them to reissue it. Assuming I ever got one. Uh, now I'm even more worried. Just drive safe, okay? You know what? So far, I like this game better than the second one. It's, um, really interesting. Human bodies are remarkable. Back in the garage, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to drive or not. But the second my hands touched the wheel, I wasn't worried anymore. My muscles reacted quicker than I expected, and it's now easy to guide this monster down the road. But now, thoughts of what I can do no longer... Uh, I can do no longer start to filter into my head. Hey, mister. Moe pipes up hesitantly. I probably let the silence go on too long. She doesn't seem as cheerful as was a little while ago. Uh, what's it like to lose your memories? That's a hard question to answer. What do you mean? Like, do they all go at once? Or a few pieces at a time? What if you're only left with sad memories? I hate, I'd hate that. Um, I don't think it works like that, but... I have no idea if it's getting worse or better. I don't know what I was like to begin with, so there's nothing to compare to. In that sense, rather than the memories vanishing, it's like everything's been painted white. That's what it feels like. Oh... You sure are mature, mister. You take everything so calmly. The conversation dwindles, leaving only the sound of the tires on the road. Then, thoughts start appearing in my head again, one after another. I know we have to check out that mirror, but what else should we investigate? What do you think? Moe glances over at me. No idea. I can't even remember my own name. How the hell am I supposed to know what we're doing? Oh, please. I'm really counting on you. Think whatever you want. I'm talking to a child. I need to show restraint and be a good example. But that's definitely how I really feel. I stare down at the steering wheel. Doll in the mansion. Mark bearers. Mark, spirits. And that mysterious deaths. 
I feel like I'm going to be buried under all the crushing thoughts that keep popping up into my head. What awaits me down this dark road? I feel a flutter from the mark on my wrist like it's trying to warn me. My brain might not be able to understand, but my body can sense it. That death is closing in. If that's happening, isn't the problem anymore. It's more, how long do I have left? Let's try that one more time. Uh, wait a minute. If that's happening isn't the problem anymore. It's more, how long do I have left? How much longer is it? Huh? I almost yell, but I managed to swallow it down with effort. I think we're almost there. Really? It's closer than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. At any time, it could... It's a lot closer than you'd think. Looming ominously in the moonlight, the school definitely looks abandoned. For quite a number of years, in fact, the walls are starting to crack. All the windows are broken as well. A thick chain is in front of the main gate to keep people from going in. Chotto, chotto. Hey, you there. Not another step. The, enth the, the enthusiastic voice comes from a man in a guard uniform. He must be patrolling the area. Looks like we got caught. This property belongs to the city. No one's allowed inside, didn't you know? Or are you up to something? A bunch of people have been coming here on dares since it's haunted. You aren't one of them, are you? Uh, I mean... What the hell? Yes, that's it exactly. Moe nods her head. Yep. We know we're trespassing, but this place is just too cool. The guard sighs. You kidding? Give me a break. There are so many people like you these days. What a pain. Anyway, the school's off limits, so you can't go inside. I don't want any trouble on my first shift here. Please leave. Okay? Muttering to himself. The guard makes his way into the school. As we watch him leave, Moe leans over and whispers, Damn, there wasn't a guard when I snuck in here before. We better not get caught. Right. Oh, wow. Hmm. This is pretty neat. Um, what's this? Hmm. Whoa. So, is, are there multiple slaves? Uh, slave slots. Save slots? Didn't seem like it before. Pushing open the doors, I head inside. Whoa, it's so dark. We can't see anything like this. The moonlight doesn't reach inside. We'll just have to use the flashlight. But if we use the flashlight... But if we use the flashlight, that guard will find us. Can't do anything about it, I guess. Anyway, that mirror is... Hmm, I'm pretty sure it's to the right, on the staircase. Oh, wow. Look how fast it moves in this game. My bag. Hmm. Oh, look at that. We've got different stats and everything. That's so weird. Shoe rack is covered in dirt. Oh, 
Ho, ho, ho. Nice try, game. The ceiling is filthy, and the fluorescent lights are broken. A half-torn poster. It says, Lost and Found, in large letters at the top. Uh, let's feel it. I touch the paper. It disintegrates the second my fingers reach out and scatters through the air. Nothing else looks interesting. Uh, okay. A flyer containing warnings and a list of contacts. Do not leave handprints on the mirror of the Eastern Staircase. Thank you. Independent research presentation. First floor. Multi-purpose... Uh, Multi-purpose... Uh, oh boy! Multi-purpose classroom. Come check it out. Wow, that presentation takes me back. Anyway, the mirror on the Eastern Staircase is the one I saw. Guess we'll go there first. Yeah, it's to the right. I know what direction east is. I might be a creepy old dude crawling through etchy elementary with a high school student, but I know which way east is. Huh? As we enter the hallway, a small shadow flits across our feet. I turn on the flashlight to find... Aw, a bunny! It's so cute! Wait a minute, I've seen ghost stories... Was it a school pet? The black rabbit squeaks and runs away. It rushes towards the eastern end of the school. Aw, it ran away. Is it telling us to follow? Haha, <laughs> yeah, right. It looks like something smashed the fluorescent lights. They're shattered beyond repair. I can see why they need a guard to protect this lovely place. Alright. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute, what? Oh, weird. So, uh, directions are relative. So if I want to go in this classroom, I gotta turn right. Instead of, like, uh, pressing down, go down on the map. Holy shit. What happened in here? The dust is so thick on the ceiling that just walking around causes a shower of particles. It's an abandoned desk. The fallen desk is slightly rusty. Uh, all right. Nothing else in here, I guess. It seems to be locked. All right. Let's do the thing the game told us to. Actually, let's well, not. Okay. Fair enough. Where's the guard? This... it... Mm, <laughs> this is it. It's the mirror I saw last time. I'm sure of it. Uh, just then, a dull pain runs through my wrist. Like something is biting into my skin. Just to distract myself from the pain, I keep talking with Moe. It certainly looks normal. Yeah, what should we do? Uh, I silently face the mirror, bringing my face up to it to peer into its cloudy surface. As I expected, I can't make anything out. All I see is my own shadow reflected as a vague, shadowy lump. My shadow sways in the mirror. At least, that's what I thought at first. I figured the shadow moved because I had, but the next time the shadow moves, a cold shiver runs down my spine. That's not my shadow. Something is in the mirror. <sighs> no 
Holloway yelps and steps back. Well, that confirms that I'm not so hallucinating. There really is something in there. Every muscle in my body locks. I try to look away, but I can't even close my eyes. The figure's mouth twists. I don't want to look, but I can't even close my eyes. It opens its mouth. An odd voice pierces my ears. Hmm. Hey, am I pretty? I'm going to try and do the right things in this game. I'm not going to deliberately get bad endings. Wait a minute. Oh, that was the wrong thing. Oops. Uh, yeah, after this one, I'm not going to do dumb things anymore. <laughs> A groaning cry, yeah, as cold as ice, echoes from the other side of the mirror. My heart struggles valiantly to keep beating. Then all I know is an unending silence. Okay. Okay, fine. stuff. I can't see well. Are you a grown-up? I'm the tallest in my class. Yeah. Big people aren't allowed in school. Suddenly, the mirror cracks. It cracked. Now, I can't see. No more big people here. The figure disappears. A scream echoes from the other side of the school. Moe sinks to the floor. She gasps in panicked disbelief for a while. I feel much the same. What was that? That was probably... Anahiko. I couldn't say it. The word sticks in my throat. My mouth is completely dry. I, I can't believe this. I thought I wanted to see a ghost, but, but, but to see one that clearly... Moe seems to shake the encounter off and return to normal. Anhiko's words swirl around in my head. Our situation is in a complete reverse from where we were just moments ago. I can't believe I was complaining about not knowing what to investigate. Oh, oh anyway. That scream. Was, was that... The guard we met outside? I doubt there's anyone else here. He might have seen something, wherever he is, too. It sounded like it came from far away. A way is down the hallway. That would be the other side of the school. Yeah, let's go look for him. But if he screamed like that, something might have happened to him. Right as I respond, I hear someone whisper in my ear. Purify with red. I look in the direction of the voice, but all I see is darkness. Mister? No, it's nothing. Let's go. New info was added to the spirit file. Anahiko, the boy in the mirror. Anahiko. Uh, Hiko. Hiko. Hito means person, right? Or, or, or alone? Individual? I don't know. 
The rain coming in from the broken window is making the floor damp and cold. And Hana means flower. Pretty boy, perhaps? Something like that. A bird cry breaks the silence. I guess there's a crow or something outside. Uh, whoa! Ho 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 ho! Okay, nice try game. Nice try game. Yeah, nothing scary now, is there? something slamming against the door. It, is someone inside? I shine the flashlight at the door. What the hell? Out of nowhere, the door bursts open and something comes flying out. I can't do a girl screaming, I'm sorry. Moe shrieks and falls down. I recognize those clothes. Some kind of plant covers half his face. I... 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 The part of his face we can see twi is twisted in anguish as he screams. No doubt about it. It's that guard. What the hell happened? Thor thorns are eating my face. It hurts. What's going on? Oh, oh. Moe sits on the floor, stunned into just... Syllables? Actually, that guy was doing a pretty good impression. The guard suddenly rushes toward the entrance. And then, silence falls once more. Ah. <sighs> the only sound left is that of our shaky breathing. Once we catch our breath, I take Moe's hand and help her up. What? It's that same thing as from the second game. Our nerves have calmed some, but that definitely left an unsettling impression. Something terrible lurks here. We can't just stand around. I felt like I was paralyzed. I'm okay now. But mister, that guy... Moe oh, stares at the door. I wonder if Hanahiko did that. And I don't know if you noticed, but I got the feeling someone was standing behind him. There's really no good way to respond to that. I let silence serve as my answer. What else could I do? No point in coming here if we're just going to stand here shaking. If we don't uncover the secret before it comes for us. Why don't we check out the staff room? I tactfully avoid answering Moe's question. The guard had to run out of here. Uh, the, guard had... the guard had run out of here. Something might be inside. Some secret from Hanahiko. Yeah, you're right. Let's just be careful, okay? I covered my wrist with my palm, making sure Moe didn't notice. The moment I'd put my hand on the knob, the mark burned my skin, pulsing along with my beating heart. The staff room is in chaos. The furniture is upended and the walls are... Was there a fire here or something? There are black scorch marks everywhere. Oh. Moe looks relieved as they, as, as she comes out from behind me. What's with the translation in this? It's so weird. Oh, it's totally empty. Anyway, let's look around. Alright. Uh huh? 
There's a door over there, too. It looks like it goes to another room. The wall near the window is burned. There must have been a fire here a long time ago. Right. It's kind of cramped in here. Is this a storage room? Seems to be. Hopefully there's something useful in here. Oh, I saw that. I saw that. It's a massive wooden cabinet. It looks really old. The corner of the doors are rounded off. Open it, you jackass. Oh, fine. I open the glass door and check inside, but there isn't anything that catches my eye. Maybe I can... I can't tell if he's saying that, like, uh, you can't open it. I'm going to try using my knife. No. Okay. Not like I got to, you know, um, stick the knife in the hole and, like, pry it open. That's the word, pry. I think it's a school journal. The paper's deteriorated from age and bugs, so I can't read it. Well... What else is in here? Aha! Uh -huh. There's a door cut into the floor. Is it some kind of storage area? It's a well-built door, big enough to fit an adult through it. I'll open it. What? Oh, I gotta feel it. The metal handle is retracted in the, the door. I try to get a grasp on it and pull it out, but I'm unsuccessful. Do I need to feel this? I pull on the door, but it just rattles in place like it won't open. Uh, something's stopping it. Uh -huh. Maybe I use the knife on this. <sighs> if I use the letter opener, I might be able to pop the handle out. I squat down by the door. My mark bites into my wrist again. It's almost like it's trying to stop me from searching under the floor. I stand up, pretending to be calm. Okay, that's worrying. Something dangerous must be here. What's wrong? Are you going to see what it is? I'll, uh, check it out later. I keep my reply as uh, vague as I dust off my knees. Let's look around the room first. There's a bunch of interesting stuff in here. There's definitely something beneath our feet. But we better make sure we're prepared if we're going down there. Well, I think I looked at everything else. Oh, what's this? There's a cardboard box on top of the cabinet. I think I can reach it. Something's written in marker on the side of the box. Lost and is legible, but the rest of the letters are smudged. What could it be? Reaching up, I grab the box and look inside. Got lipstick, red pen, and slippers. Red pen, eh? Good job, mister. I knew there was a reason you were tall. Silver letter opener, take from the Magic's Hall. Old lipstick found in the Lost and Found box. Oh, it's red too. Red lipstick, a red pen, and red slippers. Hmm. Purify in red. But what? It's a massive wooden cabinet. Looks like the sliding door has a simple lock. Just sticking something in the hole for the screw. 
Uh, looks like the sliding door has a simple lock. Just sticking something in the hole. Or the screw. What? The key itself seems to have gone missing. I don't see it anywhere. What's this? Something stuck in the hole for the screw. It seems that wooden thing works as a lock. I'll have to do something about that to open the door. I sincerely have no idea what that entire thing I just read was. It didn't make any sense to me at all. What's a... Like, what was it talking about? A screw. I pull on the door, but it just rattles in place. Looks like it won't open. Something's stopping it. Uh, can I use a letter opener? Uh, if I shove it in, I might be able to pop out whatever's stuck in the hole. That's the idea, at least. But, nope, it won't fit at all. The knife is too big. If I use the pen, I might be able to pop out whatever's stuck in the hole. Wow, you've got skills. Uh, is that surprising? Anyway, I need to focus. Suddenly, the resistance vanishes and the pen pokes all the way through. I put my hand on the door and slide it open without any issues. There's a red tube inside. Flare, huh? A flare? What's that for? It's a signal light for emergencies. It's a good idea to always have one in your car. Huh. Okay, then. But... Moy picks up something off the floor. It's a thorn about as long as my pinky finger. That's what was in the hole. This is so not a coincidence. I bet he didn't want anyone to have that, so he put a thorn in the hole. Is he scared of this? We both look at the flare again. Uh-huh. What? Why'd you turn off the light? That wasn't me. I didn't turn it off. It just went off. What was that noise? Hey, mister, what was that noise? Shh. Be quiet. I struggle not to yell with my nerves on edge. I hit the flashlight again and again. Come on. Please. The batteries were just working. I feel like I'm performing CPR on this thing. But finally. Got it. The door behind me warps threateningly. My mark burns in pain. Death is already in the room next door. There's no time and nowhere to run. Nowhere at all. Calm down. I need to find a way out of this quickly. We're running out of time. A way to survive. We've got to hurry. Uh, how about this? I take out the letter opener and shove it in. I might be able to get the handle out this way. When it touches the metal, my mark scorches me. I stop moving for just a second. But... I have to do this. Yes, I got it. I grab the handle and lift up the trapdoor. As I thought, a dark hole leads down under the floor. Get in. I shove Moe into the hole. Then I slide down into the darkness after her. <laughs> Ugh. I fall unexpectedly far hitting my back against something. I grit my teeth to stop myself from yelling. Something's shuffling around above my head. We had stayed there just a few more seconds. I grip my burning wrist with all my might. I must endure the pain for now. I can hear anxious panting. Moe must be right next to me. She's shaking so hard I can see it from the corner of my eye. I brace myself, expecting the trap door to break open at any second. But the shuffling noise finally grows distant. 
Is it okay now? Yeah, I think it's gone. Suddenly my wrist isn't hurting anymore. Thank God. I thought we were done for this time. Anyway, where are we? What in the world is this room? I'm surprised this place exists beneath the school. Can you turn on the light? Yeah. I cautiously press the switch, being careful not to make any noise. Before Moe yells, Honey? The scene captured in the light of the flashlight sends shivers down my spine. Mm -hmm. What? Moe slaps a hand over her, her mouth. For a few minutes, all we can do is stare in silence. A disturbing scene, more horrible than anything I've seen before, spreads out before us. Anyone would be shocked by it, especially a kid. I take a deep breath and look closer. There's something twisting around in the corpses. It looks like some kind of plant vine. Are those roses? The strangely sharp thorns and the thin red petals. There appears to be real live roses covering the corpses and carpeting the floor. My vision suddenly grows dim. Yay, 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 yay. Yikes. I see a woman's body trapped by roses. What is this? The tragedy that happened in this room. It's as if it's all playing out in my head. I can see it. Roses? What are they doing here? Did someone plant them? Moy's voice brings me back to reality. Y yeah. I can't tell them. I can't tell her that I saw some waking dream. I scramble to remember the conversation. That's right. I saw the rose vines then. Yeah, that's gotta be it. It's not like they just spring up on their own, but... Why would anyone do that? Did someone decorate the corpses for some kind of reason? Or did they die captured by the roses like I saw in that vision? Heek! Moy screams. What's wrong? Something moved over there, back in there. No. Is something hiding in here? Uh-oh. All right, game, come on. Give it to me. Where's that jump scare? Nothing? Okay. Fair enough. I don't really like, I don't really like jump scares that much. Actually, I kind of dislike them. I'd love to get out of here as soon as possible, but we need to take a look around, look around a little more. There's a dried up corpse. The body is twisted in an odd position, as if it's still in pain, even now. is completely discolored, stained with something that looks like sweat. Someone must have been living here, and for a long time, too. Uh, if, if anyone was going to be hiding in here, I suppose they'd be under the bed, right? The mattress is oozing dark, dirty water. It smells like sewage. I slide the mattress over and find a plastic sheet underneath it. Alright. It's pretty thick. Was it put there to protect from water damage? Should have put that on top, really. The top of the sheet is pitch black. At first glance, it looks like it's covered in mold. But when I spread it open, it crunches as dark red flakes fall from it. 
This is blood. I can't do anything but whisper, dumbfounded, as I stare at the blood-stained sheet. Something murmurs in my ear as if in reply. Their blood denies them. Part of me takes the voice seriously. I'm clearly hallucinating, but for some reason it calms me down. Still in a daze, I shine the flashlight under the bed. There it is again! Something's there! Moy's voice has gone very shrill. Then... Hey now, give me a break. I'm no monster, you know. I'm just a regular human being. Something slowly climbs out from under the bed. It's a man in a trench coat. A, a person? What were you doing under there? The man looks bored. He scoffs. Same as you. I ran into that monster and escaped down here. Then you guys came. The man turns his back to us and jerks his chin. Anyway, I was hiding over there. His answer is believable enough. Why does he have this school to begin with? His presence raises a lot of questions. The man tilts his head a bit and peers at me. Then he snorts. It seems he's seen through me. You don't look like you believe me. Guess that's only natural. I haven't told you everything either. I could, but... The man looks around at his feet. We better get out of here first. We shouldn't chat at the crime scene. I think you're right. Moe seems to feel the same way. Let's head back for now. You have somewhere to go back to? Good. Then let's get going. The man puts his hand on the ladder. He pauses and turns to us. The name's Satoru Mashita. I'm an ex-detective. I forgot to mention that. Mashta disappears up the ladder. We follow him back up to the first floor, but when we emerge, he's not there. Hey, take a look at this. Mashta is calling from us down the hallway. Was it like this when you was it like this when you guys came through? Moe pipes up, voice slightly wobbly. No, it wasn't. It wasn't like this at all. Ooh, ooh. Creepy. Something's creeping along the hallway. There are rose vines. Thought so. I didn't see them before either. This game doesn't uh, make it clear who's talking sometimes. The mark's color grows more vivid. A few hours l until death closes in. Some people naturally put others on guard, even if there's no particular ill will between them. That's exactly the sort of person Mashta is. Oh, you've got some nice stuff here. The moment he climbs in the car, he makes a grab for my bag. Then he starts inspecting all my stuff. I wasn't planning on keeping a constant eye on him, but he's making it very hard not to. Moe seems to... Seems like the type to stick her nose in everything, but... She's suspiciously silent, as if exhausted. Huh? Are you okay, Moe? Huh? Oh... Yeah, just zoning out, you know. I'm fine. She doesn't look fine, but... My other passenger is more of a concern right now. So, were you at the school because you were investigating something? I'm not on the force anymore, just poking around for my own reasons. Something I wanted to check. I don't doubt what he says, but that would mean he entered the school illegally. What were you... Let me ask you one thing first. 
Mashda, Mashda interrupts my question and points to my arm. Does that hurt? It didn't take him long to spot the mark on my wrist. Sometimes, it hurts the most whenever I'm in danger. Ah, huh. is that so? Mashda leans back in his seat, satisfied. I was investigating some missing people. I'm guessing he's responding to my question now. That school came up in a number of missing persons cases. Each one had some affiliation with H Elementary before they disappeared. Teachers, workers, people in the PTA, students and their family members. I was looking for them. Then, Moy speaks up from the back seat. Were those people the corpses down there? She doesn't sound as energetic as she usually does. Did something happen after all? Is her mark... Mashna doesn't reply. Maybe he thinks the answer's obvious, or maybe replying to a kid isn't worth his time. But something bugs me about what he just said. If the school was clearly suspicious, then... Of course, I brought it up to my superiors. All I got for it was... He continues before I can ask, making a slashing motion across his neck. He got fired, huh? Disciplinary discharge. Something about sexually harassing a subordinate. That principal's got to have some kind of political pull. I probably dug up something he didn't want getting out. That wasn't my plan. I never wanted to uncover anything dirty. True, the school did have that suspicious room. It's not that strange to think it would come up in some missing persons cases. That would be common sense, at least. But common sense is for the world of the living. A spirit it might have something to do with those cases. There's an awkward silence. In that sense, this isn't even a case anymore, is it? Mashta sighs deeply. Who would believe it? Who would believe that there's a monster in that school killing people? It's personal now. Our problem. We're on our own. He turns his wrist over and shows it to me. On his skin is the familiar mark. You too? Yeah. I sensed it as soon as I saw yours. I had a feeling this would be a problem. We're in the same boat, you and I. He has good instincts. We should talk more when we get back. At Kujo Mansion, there's some... I stopped myself from finishing the sentence. I shouldn't mention that for now. In any case, once we get back, we'll give you more details. Yeah, I'm sure that'll help a bunch. But Mashta scoffs. Help, huh? Yeah, okay, that was uh, uh, Moai talking just now. I screwed it up. Can't tell who's talking. You've got, you've got to guess. Help, huh? You're underestimating me. When I get out of the car... Someone's there to greet me. Welcome back, mister. You too, Ms. Moy. I'm glad you're unharmed. Did you find any clues about the spirit? What? So there's others? This is everyone. Huh. What a reliable group you've got. The sarcasm is practically dripping off his words. So, are you all planning on continuing to search for that key or whatever it is? We don't have anything else to go on. There's no other choice. I don't understand you. If the source of the mark is this spirit, it would be best to destroy the source, don't you think? What do you mean? The spirit exists, so all you have to do is kill it. Are you serious? Of course he's serious. He doesn't exactly look like the joking type. Even if we manage to kill it, will that really make the mark disappear? When I consider everything Mary's told me, it doesn't seem like it'd work that way. Even assuming it did, 
we have a more fundamental problem. And how do you plan on killing it? I'll figure something out. If something exists, there's logically a way to destroy it as well. He claims he can kill the spirit, yet he doesn't even know how he'll do it. Where does all that confidence come from? Don't forget, I've faced him once already. If we're seriously thinking of killing him... Mashta grasps his wrist. The little shit shot some kind of thorns at me from a distance. They hit hard enough to stick in concrete. There's no way to get in close to him. We have to make that a priority. Mashta pulls something out of the, the heel of his shoe and tosses it at me. It's a thorn, curved like a fang. The only reason I'm still breathing is because I was lucky. It won't happen next time. We need a plan. As we head to the entrance, I tell Mashta about Kujo Mansion. He takes it all in silently. Even bringing up the talking doll or Saya Kujo's death doesn't trigger a reaction. Is he so unnervingly calm because he's already dealt with the supernatural? We reach the main hall, which is warmly lit. This is a strange mansion, but for some reason I feel like I've come home. Acclimatization is kind of terrifying. Welcome back, Lord Tenma. That man is a mark bearer too, I see. Would you make the introductions? I update Mary on our investigation and the strange way we met Mashta. The mirror in the underground room full of corpses, the sudden appearance of roses. I really hate to admit it, but it's clear something supernatural is at work here, and the spirit that caused all of it, Hanahiko. There's no doubt that Hanahiko is the one who put the mark on Mashta's arm too, but... What kind of chance do we have against a monster that can do that? Mashta says we should kill him, but is that even possible? Hey, Tenma. My train of thought is interrupted. Mashta is holding a leather-bound notebook out toward me. Read this. I picked it up in that underground room. It was caught up in a bunch of those rose vines when I found it. It was pretty hard to get loose. Did you read it? I skimmed through it a bit. It's got some interesting stuff. That's what he says, but he's not smiling at all. His eyes simmer with a quiet anger. Dark red marks stain the cover. I have a bad feeling, but I flip through it. Rose petals fall as they become unstuck from the pages. The notes within are very detailed. The author was intelligent and well-written. Reading through, it dawns on me that this was written by H. Elementary's principal. The austere, meticulous letters on each page tell a ghastly story. Rumors of a young adopted boy's tutoring sessions. The first note is from five years ago. It seems the boy adopted by the principal was small and exceedingly cute. He enjoyed wearing skirts and makeup too. There was no denying that they truly suited a dainty red-cheeked boy like him. But the principal had a hard time accepting such fancies. Bad habits must be corrected young to promote sound mental health, he thought. So he called it tutoring as a cover for his warped desires. They took place in the underground room. Too many prying eyes anywhere else. There was no safer place than the school at night once all the teachers left. The principal stayed behind under the pretense of keeping watch, then tutored. He was a highly respected teacher. He'd even made reappearances on TV. There was no reason to be suspicious. The only one who'd noticed anything strange was the boy's homeroom teacher, but she feared the principal's power and firmly kept her mouth shut. As the notes continue, they are more and more deranged. They paint a horrible picture. It is of a totally distorted parent and child. My child gets weaker after every session. His delicate frame has grown thinner, and his red cheeks are now darkened. His appearance is described in detail, but there is no malice or hatred. There's just fanatical sincerity. 
His pride as an educator and a terrifying, smothering love. It continues like that to the very last page. There's no mention of what became of the principal and the boy, but going by this current state of H Elementary, I can hazard a guess. Don't look so well, mister. What was in that notebook? Tsukasa peers up at me. He and the boy in the notebook are about the same age. This isn't stuff you share with a kid. I better just sum up the main points for him. That's terrible. We children are always the victims of the ego of adults. Stupid grown-ups are irredeemable. Oh, look at that face. Seems familiar. What he'd say, uh, why he'd say that makes sense. The revolting evil of adults and the poor vo boy who became a victim. But is that really the end? If Hanako and the boy in the notebook are connected, then the boy turned into a monster. Is that even possible? Untimely deaths produce hatred. Death does not bring it to an end. Such festering sentiments can give birth to the supernatural. Monsters, ghosts, vengeful spirits, they have many names. I believe that you have all heard one or two such stories. Anahiko is similar. Mary's words are hard to swallow, but after all those weird events, it only makes sense to uh, accept them. If I can turn back the truth, all that will await me is death. If I turn my back to the truth, all that will await me is death. Then Hanahiko really is a monster. We must form a plan based on that hypothesis. Mary is silent a moment. Then her jade glass eyes shift to Mashta. Incidentally, according to Lord Tenma's report, there are those among you who are considering killing the spirit. I shall warn you just in case, but that will be very difficult to do. Why is that? I could see Mashta's narrow his eyes, but I made sure to speak up first. They are from the world of the dead. Just as a living cannot become more alive, the dead cannot be killed. The only thing you could possibly do is destroy the cursed sentiment. So, what does that mean? It is as I told you before, death and life existing together. If that is the origin of the mark, then a, weird, a way to erase it will be there. By driving away the spirit, the curse will also be eliminated. So defeating Hanahiko is how we'll be able to destroy the mark. Setting aside how he can't be killed, what exactly is the key then? It is nothing more than a concept, so I am unsure, but I am certain of one thing. Fate ties the spirit to its place of birth. An object there may be able to fulfill the role of the key. It is difficult. It is a difficult concept to grasp, but that is just how spirits are. Determining the nature of the key, that will decide your fate. I had a feeling. We'll just have to keep digging around at H Elementary. We don't know what the cursed sentiments are, uh, what the cursed sentiments or the key to destroying the grudge are. Gaining the key and lifting the grudge is the only way to survive. You will be required to be callous to make use of the spirit's fear. The way to repel the spirit lies within his grudge. Remember this and be careful. I'll keep, uh, oh, so we have the choice of going with him. Interesting. Hmm. Actually, I've been going for uh, almost an hour and a half now. I think that's a good place to leave it right there. So, um, definitely consider picking this up. It seems really, really cool. I'm enjoying it already more than, uh, the first chapter of the first game, or the 
The second game, rather. 